Welcome to number 40 episode of the Keto Vegan podcast. I'm Rachel, I'm your host. And today's episode is Buzzworthy Bites, Navigating the Avocado Vegan Controversy. There are a few links at the bottom in the show notes that shows you I've got some information from. And I'm going to be answering the questions that are so often asked um, by non-vegans about, well, I don't think you could eat an avocado if you're a vegan because of the bees, because as a vegan, I don't eat honey. So let's explore that a little bit further. To begin with, I was really sort of wondering, what do I do an episode on this week? And I was thinking, I want some inspiration, please. And I've just moved into my friend's house in a room, which is why I've blurred my background, because everything that I've got with me that's not in storage is in this room. It's nice and cosy. Everything I need is here. My nice comfy chair, my desk, my bed, my clothes, my shoes, suitcases for when I go and stay at my daughter's every other weekend, um, all that sort of thing. But it's nice and snug. It's nice and cosy. It's a lovely place as well. So thank you, Cookie, for letting me stay here for however long it's going to be before my house goes through. OK, I am going to answer these questions about why do many people think that vegans can't eat avocados? So, um, Cookie also looks after adults with learning difficulties. So they have just arrived. So I'm going to have to shut my door and I'm actually going to go and say hello. So I'll be back in a sec. OK, so I've said hello to Cookie and the guys that he is looking after. That was really lovely. And I can't even remember where I got to. So I actually remember the first time I ever had avocados. Not very many things. I remember the first time I had it. I'm just trying to think, is there anything else? I remember that very first time, but I don't think there is, but there certainly was with avocado. It seemed really posh to me. Anyway, my mum, me and my younger sister went up to um, the London suburbs to my auntie's and she served it to us in a salad. And I don't know whether it's a London thing or what, I don't know, but it was just, I'd never had it before. I was a teenager at that time. So it was back in the eighties, probably mid eighties. And it was, I really liked it. It seemed that quite um, sort of exclusive kind of food type. We were from Kent, Maidstone in Kent. And I mean, they probably had them down there, but I don't know, mid 80s, we'll have to find, well, I'm not going to find out. So that was the first time I ever had avocado, really like it. And then other little family thing, my dad, if he ever did a posh dinner party, he would do avocados filled with prawns. You know, that sort of one with a bit of salad as well. So that's how he always served his avocado. It's the only time he had ever avocado I think he would always do Sunday roasts that wasn't a posh dinner party the posh dinner party had that as a starter not your Sunday roast so back in the day before I was vegan and keto then if I think I once went to dad's for a dinner party he had some friends over and invited me and one was a psychologist and because I teach psychology and had done my psychology degree, he invited me too. So that's why I went. Now, vegans love avocados and especially if you're keto, because if you're keto, an avocado has got such a perfect um, distribution of nutrition. So in the nutrition, per 100 grams, the fat is 19.5 grams. Carbs, only 2.9 grams. Protein, quite low, 1.9, but fiber, 3.4. So it has more fiber than carbs. So you're in um, positive, you're not in, well, whatever that is. Um, so what's that called? Um, I can't even remember. Sorry about that. But not only does it have that nutritional distribution, it's also got loads of other great things in them. Potassium, vitamin C vitamin B6, what's that called? Pantothenic acid, which is vitamin B5, vitamin E, magnesium, folate as well. So they are really good for you. The first time somebody said to me, was a student at school, when I was saying about being plant-based, I think I'd popped into the FNN room, the food and nutrition classroom, which was next door to my classroom a couple of years ago. I went in and one, oh, the teacher, the FNN teacher wanted me to come in and just chat about plant-based diet 
and they were having a debate about it. It was very interesting. These kids were great. And one of the students said to me, she's a year 11 girl now, she was year 10 then, said to me, oh, Miss Jin, do you eat avocados? And I said, or oh, she said to me, you know, you can't eat avocados. They're not vegan. And I said, oh, why is that? I said, I hardly ever do. And she said, oh, because of the bees and that. And I hadn't heard about it before. She said, they have to transport the bees and it's not natural and so on and so on. I didn't know that. That's the first I'd heard of it. Over the years, decades maybe, there has been a lot of controversy about avocados. Who'd have thought? I certainly wouldn't. So it's been blamed, apparently, when I was doing my research, um, for driving millennials to the brink of financial ruin. Wow. And also it's caused a health hazard with the proliferation of what is called avocado hand. Injuries caused by people carelessly attempting to remove the stone um, with a chef's knife. And then, I mean, I'm sure you can imagine how that ha works. What you could do is just put the knife in the stone firmly and then pull it out that way. That could also cause damage too. But the latest controversy is, of course, because of the bees and the migratory effect. Now, where has this come from? Okay, in the UK, there's a programme called QI. It's very funny. It's um, asked lots of different questions. It's got four people on the panel plus the host. And the host is, at the moment, Sandy Toxpig. I think that's how you pronounce her name. And um, she asked the question, which of the following foods, let me just get this correct. Contestants were asked, which of the following foods were vegan? Almonds, avocado, cantaloupe, kiwi or butternut squash? And one of the contestants, Alan Davies, answered any of them, to which the moderator, Sandy Toxfig, responded that actually... Um, none of the foods belong in a strictly vegan diet. OK, so in the same way that honey isn't vegan. OK, let's explore that a little bit. All of those crops of the produce that I've just mentioned, the process actually is a because of the pollination. They are difficult to cultivate naturally. And all of those crops rely on bees. And how they get the bees to those crops, it's called migratory beekeeping. So they load them onto the back of trucks in their hives, and then they are shipped to where the produce is. And once they've pollinated, they get shipped to other places to pollinate those and the thing is it's not just those foods that that happens to many many foods vegetables fruits that we eat are subject to bees being having to be migrated artificially to pollinate them not all farms rely on this migratory process smaller farms don't need to but because there are billions of us on the planet, we can't rely on smaller farms. We need this mass production to produce all the foods that are eaten by humans. OK, let's look at the definition of what vegan is. I'm going to read this so I don't get it wrong. Um, it's by the Vegan Society. And actually, the Vegan Society first created the word vegan. OK, so let's see what they say about it. They say veganism is a way of living which seeks to exclude as far as possible and practicable all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals for food, clothing or any other purpose. In an ideal world, we would live entirely independently of animals. We wouldn't be using them for our advantage. We would let them live wild. We would let them be. But we need to be realistic when there's how many people on the planet at the moment? Eight billion? More than that? The definition given to us by the Vegan Society acknowledges that it's not practicable. It is not possible for everybody to live that way. Don't you love it as well when people say, yeah, but when you're when you're um, cutting down all the crops, all the soy that you eat as a vegan, then you're killing animals all the time. But when people spout on about these arguments, do they realise that the most soy that is produced in the world is to feed cattle? And let's let I'm not going to get into an argument about that. 
but it's about seeing the big picture, isn't it? When we know and climate activists and scientists have shown that the best thing for our planet is that people stop eating animal products. That's the best thing for our planet. It's one of the only ways we can sustain this beautiful earth for our future generations. When I know people, which I do, who are absolutely planet focused when it comes to travel, when it comes to use of plastic and so on, but they eat animal products I think that doesn't make any sense to me. Why have they not gone and doing the thing that is actually going to make the biggest impact? A spokesperson from the Vegan Society has said that vegans make a huge contribution to the reduction in suffering and death caused to animals. And we would welcome, and she says, we would welcome any changes made to farming practices that support this. In an ideal world, we'd all be using locally produced foods, farmers markets, etc. Our climate at the moment, wet nearly all the time, but our climate is not amenable, if, that, if that's the right word, for avocados to grow. Now, my son, he had an avocado stone once he put it in some ground and it started growing. I don't know what's happened to that. I think he gave it to my nephew, his cousin, as a wedding present. I'm not sure. I wonder what's happened to that. Okay, so this controversy all started because of QI. I do love that programme. I love seeing little reels of it on my Facebook when I'm on social media. I think it is hilarious. Um, But I don't watch telly, so I don't actually watch the whole programme. Anyway, something about that later. Mm, doubt it. It's a bit boring, isn't it? Okay, so QI, they failed to bring to light, actually, that so much is affected. It's not just crops like avocados, almonds, um, that rely on commercial beekeeping, beans. Okay, here's a here's a list of some. Beans, tomatoes, apples, broccoli, melons, carrots, onions, hundreds of other fruits, vegetables, and grains are also pollinated by bees bred for commercial purposes. Okay, so if we actually did decide to not eat anything that had had bees pollinated that have been bred for it, we would, if we're vegans, well, anybody, actually, if you're going to avoid that, we would be dangerously low on nutrition. So you have to make choices. Make choices that are going to do as little harm as possible. And back to that quote from the Vegan Society, seeks to exclude as far as is possible and practicable all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals. In dietary terms, it denotes the practice of dispensing with all produ products derived wholly or partly from animals. So that's a different quote that I found from a different article from those links below, but saying the same thing. This article that I found actually ends by saying avocados are vegan. As a vegan, why are you vegan? Is it for the animals? Is it for the environment? Does that actually make a difference to the choices that you make? I wonder. Interesting, isn't it? Because I became vegan for the animals, as you know. In so doing, environmentally, I've got an impact as well. It says, it, you know, ethically, there are better choices. We need to think about the things that we do, the things that we consume, the way that animals are used, do the research or ask me and I'll do the research for you. Some vegans will decide, actually, I am not going to eat kiwis, almonds, avocados. Finally, from my blurred out background room, I just want to finish by saying think ethically. You may decide, actually, I'm not going to eat certain things because of the migratory process with bees. I think as keto and cutting out carbs, and if you're going high fat and you want milks as well, then the unsweetened almond milk is perfect as uh, as keto and vegan. Almonds are great as keto vegan, but you can survive without both. What are you going to do? I think I am going to think about it deeper and further and maybe do even more research I will see, but I think if we as keto vegans cut all of these things out, then we would become malnourished, 
we would become very unhealthy and all those meat eaters that say, oh, but vegans, you know, they're so unhealthy, et cetera, et cetera. Then, yeah, they might have a point there. Now, also, these meat eaters, why do they find it that they have a right to criticise vegans for eating things when bees are that migratory process? They don't turn and look at themselves about what they are doing to harm animals, but they feel that it's OK to judge us about what we are doing and what we're doing wrong. Now, I avoid getting into arguments with non-vegans about it. I try to be as loving and light about it as possible. You're never going to change somebody with an argument. People become defensive, argumentative, and that's not how we change, is it? That's not how I changed. I would get defensive if I was told that I was doing something wrong. And that is not how we are going to change the world. The Buddha said, and many other spiritual leaders and gurus, and I've just realized I forgot to turn my light back on when I came in. So the light changed through this podcast as well. If you're watching, sorry about that. Shows you just how professional I am, doesn't it? So many spiritual leaders over time has said that the only way, the only thing to do to respond to anger or hatred or violence is with love. The Buddha said that if I was a really good RS teacher, I would remember the quote because I used to teach it when I taught the Buddhism GCSE about four years ago. I can't remember, though, but it's definitely you you don't respond with violence to violence. You don't res don't respond with anger to anger. Don't respond with hatred to hate. Respond to all of those things with love. Love is the thing that changes people, that changes worlds, that changes attitudes. And you do what you can. Do the best that you can. Don't stand there on your soapbox telling everybody else that they're wrong being judgmental do what you feel to be right I hope you enjoyed the podcast I can see you can see that I've got a mirror behind me it's a tree of life and then if I move out it gets blurred um I love the tree of life but you can't, I can't see that because my head's kind of in the way and it's all weird isn't it the blurry stuff Okay, that is that from today's episode. I hope it was helpful. I hope it's answered some of your questions. If you've got anything that you want me to look at or to cover, then do contact me, leave um, information or leave um, some details below the YouTube one or email me if it's on a podcast and I'll be back next time. 